Hi, my name is Hamza Reyes. I'm a critical care fellow at Mayo Clinic Rochester. Over the next five minutes, I'll be talking about the updated 2017 Global Initiative for Chronic Obstructive Lung Disease. COPD is one of the leading causes of death in the United States. Over 3 million people died of COPD in 2012, accounting for 6% of all deaths globally. And these numbers are going up every year. Therefore, it's very important to not only promptly diagnose these patients, but also differentiate between different disease severities so that appropriate therapeutic modalities can be used to help those patients. And here comes the rule of Goal 2017, which in addition to grading COPD to grade 1 to 4 based on spirometry measurements, but also further classifies it into ABCD grouping based exclusively on patient symptoms and functional status. I like to compare FEV1 with air resistance on a speeding car. This Formula 1 performance depends for sure on aerodynamics. However, whatever airway resistance is there, even if the front was completely squared, wouldn't stop it from advancing. Which tells us there are other variables to take into consideration, including the strength of the engine, condition of tires, how much gas it has left on it, and whether the body of the car is still in shape or not. Similarly, when we were speaking about the lungs, spirometry helps grade the severity of COBD to some extent. But there are other factors that significantly contribute to overall disease severity, like comorbidities, overall general health, number of exacerbations, and admissions the patient had to the hospital. Therefore, it's really more than spirometry measurements, which is the reason for the new Goal 2017 grouping classification, which looks at the patient's current magnitude of symptoms, functional status, exacerbations, and admissions to the hospital. So when you have a clinical diagnosis of COBD and confirmed obstructive airway disease on a pulmonary function test, check also for history of exacerbations and admissions related to exacerbation. If your patient had one or no admissions to the hospital, and this is likely a relatively mild form of COBD, but if your patient had two or more exacerbations and any number of admissions, then this is likely a relatively more severe form of COPD. But as you can see, this is too broad. We need to be more specific. So let's further break it down into A and B, depending on severity of shortness of breath using, using the modified Medical Research Council scoring system and using the functional status of the patient with the CAT score. If the scores are low, it's likely group A, meaning less severe disease. If they are high, it's group B, meaning more severe disease. The same applies for those with more severe disease. If they score low, it's group C, meaning less severe. If they score high, it's group D, meaning more severe form of severe disease. Finally, looking at the overall picture, you can see that we have not used FEV1 for the ABCD group classification. Instead, the goal 2017 is only using symptomatic assessment of disease frequency and severity with overall effect on functional status. And here, you can see the different modalities of therapy in each group, again irrespective of FEV1, ranging from just a short-acting bronchodilator for patients in group A to a combination of long-acting bron bronchodilators plus inhaled steroids to treat those with more severe disease in group D. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope it was useful for you. Thank you.